Welcome to the Mark Donald Show, the cybersecurity show. I will show you step by step how to get a Wi Fi password to show easily and quickly. It can get frustrating when you are trying to surf the web, but can't, right? I will show you various ways to get a Wi Fi password to show, how hackers can easily see your Wi Fi and do damage to your system, and best practices to do to protect your Wi Fi password. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. So, uh, you are the person who owns the Wi-Fi, right? And you have access to the router. It would be best if you tried this. Let's do it. Uh, you can use the WPS protocol. That's the WPS Wi-Fi protected setup. That's what is WPS Wi-Fi protected setup is a protocol that simplifies a secure wireless network setup. When you press the WPS button on a router, it initiates a process where devices can connect uh to the network without the need to enter a password however this method requires a pre-shared key or passphrase to establish a secure connection if your router has a wps button you can use it to connect to the wi-fi network with your android device in one of two ways you, you know there's the push button method you can press and hold the wps button on the router until the led light starts flashing then select the wps option on your android device's wi-fi settings Follow the prompts to complete the connection. Then there is the pin method, right? On the router, look for the WPS pin on the label or in the router settings. Go to the Wi-Fi settings on your Android device. Select the WPS option, then choose the pin method. Enter the pin displayed on the router uh, to complete the connection. However, it's very important uh, to note that using WPS to connect to Wi-Fi networks is not recommended as it is vulnerable to attacks. It's generally safer to connect to Wi-Fi networks using a secure password. Now, uh, are you in a frame of mind where you're tethering and it, you know, it basically needs no password? Samsung has announced a new feature that allows users to share their existing connected Wi-Fi with others using Bluetooth. This functionality operates through Quick Share, an official Samsung app designed for sharing files and media, which now includes support for sharing Wi-Fi. Similarly, uh, you can utilize Bluetooth tethering options to make it easier for any Android device to share your connected Wi-Fi without sharing the password with others providing speeds up to 2 megabits per second, even if you have a 30 megabits per second Wi-Fi plan. That being said, there are several other factors applicable to Bluetooth tethering, and this is one method for sharing Wi-Fi passwords or internet access without using QR codes. Now, checking password for admin panel. Also, log into the Wi-Fi's router admin panel and view the Wi-Fi password. Step one, open your web browser and enter your router's IP address in the address bar. The IP address is typically in the format of like a, let's say a 192.168.0.1 or 192.168.1.1. You can usually find the IP address on the back of your router or in the documentation that came with it. Step two, enter your username and password to access the router's administrator administrative panel if you are still you know if you still need uh, to change the default username and password you can find them in the documentation that came with your router step three uh, once logged in to the admin panel look for a section called wireless or wi-fi settings this section may be under settings or advanced tab step four within the wireless settings section look for a subsection called security or security settings here you should see the option to view your Wi-Fi password. Now, uh, the password may be hidden or obfuscated, so you may need to click a button or checkbox to reveal it. Okay, you may, you may, you may have to do that. Now, step five, once you've located your Wi-Fi password, make a note of it or copy it down. You can use this password to connect other devices to your Wi-Fi network. Now, three, you're gonna have to update your Android uh, OS, okay? This is... Don't be having no, don't be having no old one here, right? Uh, updating the Android OS is another way to try if you want to view a Wi-Fi password. But finally, uh, you have to use the QR code to know the password below Android 9. There are there's basically no way to view Wi-Fi passwords without rooting your device. You can also borrow a smartphone. Firstly, if you have to bring a smartphone with Android 10 or above, and you can you know 
if you know you can ask your friends or neighbors about it because any android 10 or the device would help you know the wi-fi password using the qr code method after getting a smartphone that runs over the android 10 offer uh you have to use the wps connection button available on all uh, smartphones which helps you log into wi-fi just by pressing a wi-fi button so it is of someone's experience uh, that, you know, of knowing save Wi-Fi, you know, passwords without QR codes. And, you know, when it comes to viewing Wi-Fi passwords without a QR code, real MEC 11, which runs on Android 9.0, and there's no option to generate a QR code to share a password or view a password. To view the saved Wi-Fi password, uh, you know, call your best friend <laughs> and tell him to bring, you know, his or her uh, smartphone home. Uh, and then you can use the WPS push button to connect your Wi-Fi router to the smartphone and then generate a QR code, which is uh, how you can know your Wi-Fi password, which is more important. Uh, so, you know, you can use the WPS push button to get the login. Uh, you might have heard that, you know, of all Android applications on Play Store that they will show you the same Wi-Fi password, but uh, can't live without the route. You cannot view it. If, if you don't have the route, you cannot view it, right? These apps misguide users with their false claims. Uh, so this is what is learned, right? Uh, for rooted devices, this method is perfect if you're a tech enthusiast, you know, who has rooted your device, okay? Step one, download a File Explorer app that supports root access, such as Root Explorer or ES File Explorer. Step two, open the app and navigate to the data slash uh, misc slash Wi-Fi directory. Step three, locate the WPA underscore uh, supplicant dot uh, CONF file and open it using a text editor. Step four, voila, right? You can now view saved Wi-Fi passwords in plain text format. Now, no, uh, think of it like this, right? When you root your phone, you're essentially removing the safety net the manufacturer put in place to protect you from harm. It's like taking off your seatbelt while driving. You might feel more unrestricted and in control, but you're also more vulnerable to danger. A uh, routing can expose your phone to security threats as it can allow malicious software to access your device's sensitive data. It can also void your warranty, leaving you high and dry if something goes wrong. And just like performing a high wire act without a uh, net, one wrong move during the routing process can send your phone blazingly crashing uh, to the ground. But figuratively speaking, we're not, we're not saying this in real life, right? Uh, there are ways to view why, you know, uh, save the Wi-Fi password without the QR code. And I'm going to talk about it right now. Uh, and there's going to be multiple waves, m multiple ways. So brace yourself. Uh, the first way is the Wi-Fi password recovery apps. You can use specialized apps from the Play Store to retrieve and display saved Wi-Fi passwords. There's the file manager. You can navigate to system files using a file manager app to locate, uh, you know, the WPA underscore supplicant dot CONF file to find the Wi-Fi password. We talked about that a little bit, but saying it again, just for those who didn't hear in the back, you have the ADB, the Android debug bridge. You can use the ADB commands to access the device's uh, configuration files and retrieve the saved Wi-Fi password. There's the Wi-Fi file transfer app. You can use apps like AirDroid or Portal to access the device's internal storage and navigate to system files to find the password. There is the router configuration. You can log into the router's admin panel and locate the Wi-Fi password in the settings. There's the Google account sync. Check your Google accounts settings for Wi-Fi password sync with your Android device. There's the Wi-Fi password recovery tool. You can use desktop tools like wireless key view to retrieve Wi-Fi passwords via USB debugging mode when connected to a computer. You can check the router label or documentation. You can look for the password on a label attached to the router or in the router's documentation. There's the contact network administrator. If you're trying to access a public Wi-Fi network, ask the administrator for the password. Um, now, uh, when it comes to viewing uh, different ways to, uh, you know, see your saved Wi-Fi password without the QR code, um, you know, there's the Wi-Fi settings, right? Again, access Wi-Fi settings on Android 10 or above. Tap on the network and generate a QR code to view the password. There's the Google Wi-Fi sharing. Generate a QR code for a saved network using the Wi-Fi settings and share it with another device. There's third-party apps. Install apps that generate QR codes for the Wi-Fi passwords from the Play Store. You have the router admin. 
uh, panel, some routers allow you to generate QR codes for Wi-Fi passwords through the admin panel. QR code generators use online QR code generators to encode your Wi-Fi password and generate a QR code. There's Wi-Fi password manager apps, install apps that display saved Wi-Fi passwords and generate QR codes for sharing. There's the, sh you know, you can also share the Wi-Fi network. Android 12 or above allows you to share Wi-Fi networks via nearby share, generating a QR code. There's the router manufacturer apps. Some router manufacturers offer dedicated apps with QR code generation features. Uh, there's Wi-Fi password sharing apps. You can use apps designed for sharing Wi-Fi passwords that generate QR codes. Now, we covered we covered a hefty amount, but hackers are able to see your Wi-Fi network, right? And so you protect yourself. And there are tools like Fern, uh, and it's very easy as a hacker long, launching the tool, right? On Kali Linux, long, you, they can launch Fern with you know from the application menu. They can select an interface, choose the wireless interface for scanning networks. And, you know, they can scan for networks, initiating a network scan to identify available Wi-Fi networks. And, you know, if you want to try this out, please use this responsibly. Don't hack anybody's network without permission. When it comes to executing the attack, there's the network selection. After scanning the, you know, you know the selected network you wish to crack, uh, there's the attack method. You can choose between WEP, WPA, or WPA2 cracking methods based on the network's security protocol. There's the capture handshake for WPA slash WPA2. Fern tries to capture the handshake, which is essential for cracking the password. Now, um, that is a just a, a very quick overview, but in, in, a, in, in a more guide sense, Fern Wi-Fi Cracker usually comes pre-installed with Kali Linux. To launch Fern, navigate to the Kali Linux applications menu and find Fern under wireless attacks uh, and Fern Wi-Fi Cracker. Alternatively, you can start it from the terminal with sudo Fern Wi-Fi Cracker. Upon launch, Fern requests permission to activate the computer's wireless interface. Grant this permission to proceed. Um, there is scanning the networks. You can click on the scan for access points button. Choose your wireless card in the newly opened window and click enable slash disable monitor mode. Once the monitor mode is enabled, Fern starts scanning for networks. A list of available Wi-Fi networks will be displayed along with their encryption types, WEP, WPA, and WPA2. Now, uh, selecting the network, uh, you can choose a network you wish to analyze or attack for ethical hacking purposes. Ensure that this is a network you own or have permission to test because again, I'm not encouraging bad behavior or illegal activity. Click on the network. If it's WEP, the attack will start automatically. For WPA slash WPA2, you'll need to provide a wordless file for cr uh, password cracking. Now there's the wordless attack for WPA and WPA2. Uh, you can click on the browse button to select a wordless file. Kali Linux comes with several pre-installed word lists, which you can use. After selecting a word list, click on the Wi-Fi attack button to start the cracking process. Now, there are ways you can protect yourself, protect your Wi-Fi, uh, so that it is not easily, you know, being shown. Um, you can create a strong password, right? A strong Wi-Fi password is crucial. It should be at least 16 characters long and include a mix of uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers, and special characters. Avoid using easily guessable information like birthdays or names. Regularly changing your password can further enhance security. You can also change the default network name, uh, also known as the SSID, right? Change the default SSID service set identifier of your Wi-Fi network. This helps avoid attracting hackers who may target networks with default names, which often indicate poor security practices. Choose a name that does not reveal any personal information. You can enable a uh, network encryption. Make sure your router's encryption is enabled. The most secure options are WPA3 or WPA2. This encryption scrambles the data transmitted over your network, making it difficult for outsiders to interpret or, or intercept your information. Check your router settings to ensure encryption is active. You can also regularly update your router. Keep your router's firmware up to date. Manufacturers release updates to fix vulnerabilities that could be exploited uh, by hackers. You can set your router to automatically update if possible or check for updates regularly. Okay, that's very important uh, because if you don't do that, then you're leaving vulnerabilities out there and hackers can, can <laughs> do some damage. Uh, you can also disable SSID broadcasting. Consider turning off SSID broadcasting, which makes your network invisible to casual users. 
This adds an extra layer of security by preventing your network from appearing in the list of available networks. You can create a guest network, set up a separate guest network for visitors. This limits access to your main network and devices, reducing the risks of malware or unauthorized access from guest devices. You can use a password manager if you you know if you struggle to remember complex passwords. A uh, password manager can help. These tools can generate and store strong passwords securely, allowing to use um, unique passwords for different networks and services, right? Please keep that in mind. You can change the router admin credentials, change the default administrative username and password for your router. This prevents unauthorized access to your router settings, which could allow a hacker to change your Wi-Fi password or disable security features, okay? Um, now, WPA3 is, is, is the best one as far as an encryption standpoint, in my opinion, when it comes to uh, Wi-Fi networks, networks in general. Uh, so enabling WPA3 encryption significantly improves Wi-Fi security. Uh, I would say that um, because of the stronger uh, password protection, right? Uh, WPA3 uses simultaneous authentication of equals, also known as SAE, which provides more robust password-based authentication. This makes it much harder for attackers to crack passwords through offline dictionary attacks. Even if users choose relatively simple passwords, there's the enhanced uh, encryption aspect of it. WPA3 employs stronger encryption algorithms. WPA3 personal use, personally uses 128-bit encryption, while WPA3 Enterprise can use up to 192-bit encryption compared to WPA2's 64-bit or 128-bit encryption. There's the individualized data encryption. WPA3 introduces individualized data encryption for each device connected to the network. This means each device has its own encryption key, improving privacy and security compared to WPA2's shared encryption key system. There's the forward secrecy. WPA3 implements forward secrecy, which protects previously transmitted data, even if the, even if the current password is compromised. That's a good one right there. There's the protection against crack attacks, K-R-A-C-K. WPA3's new handshake authentication process eliminates vulnerabilities like the key reinstallation attack that affected the WPA2. There's improved security for IoT devices. WPA3 includes features like Wi-Fi Easy Connect, which simplifies the secure connection process for devices with limited interfaces, making IoT deployments more secure. There's the um, safer public Wi-Fi. WPA3 enhances security on open public networks by providing encryption uh, without shared password.